so in today's video I thought I'd show you what we're trying to do in terms of cut down some of the costs on feeding our chickens. Um, last count we have 35 of them and it was costing us a literal fortune to feed them so I did a little bit of research now I might be an old duck but I can still use some new technology so I actually used chat GPT <laughs> to see if I can get some recipes for using what we've got on the land to help supplement feed our chooks and uh, I came up with using our cassava root, um, our arrowroot, moringa, uh, sesbanian peas, wattles, you name it. I've been able to sort of find some recipes that can use up some of these uh, different things that we have growing really well on the land. Um, and I've put together how that looks when I put it in together to make the feed. Now, <laughs> this, is, this is definitely a lot cheaper for us, but it's a lot of hard work. So please watch. And if you can see any point where you go, oh, Jeannie, that's, that's the hard way of doing it. We've got a much easier way of doing it here. Please leave some comments. Um, really also appreciate it. If anybody's interested, I, I, I can't imagine ever getting there. But if I get something like a thousand followers on YouTube, I might get some money back on this. Now, that's not what I'm doing it for. I don't even know why I'm doing it. I think maybe just for the fun of it. Um, but if you want to like and subscribe, I'd be really happy. If you think you know somebody who's as silly as Brendan and I and just want to go and live in the country, even though we're too old to be doing what we're doing um pass it on definitely if you can find or know of somebody who has an easier way of doing this please share it with them and get them to give me some feedback because i got to tell you it's hard work but it's saving us a fortune anyway so that's what's happening in what i've filmed today but i uh, enjoy what i've done i hope anyway so this is the process. It's long and we're still not sure of the outcome, but follow along for the journey and see how we go. So the first thing that we do is at night we get all of our scraps and we put them into this saucepan. As you can see, we don't bother cleaning the saucepan because this will be used every single day just to feed the chooks. Lulu will often come with me for these jobs. Sit. Come. She's such a good girl. So, come on, Lulu. Come. I'm going to show you some of our chooks. And they're just a small number of the many, many chooks that we currently have. This little batch of about a dozen chicks are um, our meat bird experiment in its fullest. That's mama. She actually sat on the eggs so we didn't have to use an incubator for the most part with these. We've planted cassava all throughout the garden and we've also planted Queensland arrowroot. I use these as the carbohydrate part of our chicken feed. As you can see, there's lots and lots of it. Now, when it comes to the Queensland arrowroot, that's a pretty easy job. All you have to do is lean in, grab it, shake off the dirt, and we can use the roots and some of the stems in the process for the food. When it comes to the cassava, it's a much bigger job. So you're going to have to first of all pull up your cassava tree, which this one was pulled up yesterday. And then you're going to dig up the roots. Now, the trouble with cassava is you can't sort of dig up enough for two or three days. You can see that's already starting to go a little bit off. You kind of like have to pick it fresh. So that's one of the problems 
with cassava. One of the good things about cassava is you can plant it in the most rotten ground that you could possibly imagine and it will grow. What I normally do is break off the branches so I can get to it easy enough and they don't get hung up into anything else. As you can see they break off easily and that's one of the big blessings because every one of these branches ah, can then be stuck in the ground and they will grow more cassava. So very, very cheap plant to grow. Now I've already mentioned some of the problems with cassava, but the biggest problem is that if you were to eat this raw, you'd actually be having a nice little munch down on cyanide of all things. Um, it's a major staple food in a lot of the developing countries, but they don't eat it raw. What they do is they soak, they peel, they grate, and they cook. So pulling it out of the ground is not the end of this process. So here's the peeled cassava. As you can see, I'm not too precious about that um, because there's quite a few processes left to go. I probably over-process with the view to making sure that I get rid of all that cyanide. Over here, you can see my industrial fruit juicing machine. Um, we got this off Marketplace. I think in the States they call it Craigslist, but I might be wrong. We got it off Marketplace for about $50. It's industrial strength. I don't think the people who were selling it were quite aware of what they had. Um, this does a great job of preparing our cassava. It crushes it beautifully. So that's basically the process in here. That's all my tapioca pulp and in here is the tapioca juice. The biggest challenge I have now is cleaning out the machine, but I won't bore you with that. This all then goes into the pot and gets cooked up with some extra water. So what I do with that is I cook it and then I let it cool. And one of the things that we do here on a relatively daily basis is we make our own yogurt. We've got a little yogurt maker over here from Aldi. And so we're in the process of making yogurt there and over here in the fridge we have some already straining and then that's the way from the yogurt full of protein and probiotic goodness which will be the last thing that i put into the brew before i serve it up to my chicken so they spoilt or what <laughs> 